Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. It's the first week of January. Here we go. Here we go. Into the abyss. We don't know what's going to happen. Well, we do. We know what's going to happen the first week of January. We see it every year. We're going to get more new listings. Now, for those of you that are waiting for prices to come down, there's things you're going to have to see before prices come down. If you're thinking of listing, you're going to want a brisk market or you're going to want at least a balanced market because that's a good time to list. If you're an investor, you're going to want the market to be slower than slow so that maybe you can find a deal. So let's take a look and see what's going on right now. And the first thing that happens is it's easy to predict January and February when it comes to new listings because they always go up. See that? So I can say, guess what? We're going to have more new listings in January. Yay. Rick was right. Well, they always go down in November, December. So they're just rebounding from where they were. And there'll be more because uh, January is usually when people decide they want to put their homes on the market. So what am I going to look at? I'm going to see if listings under contract follow those new listings. In other words, I check this on the seven-day moving average here, and I can see that the blue line is new listings, and the black line down here is a number going under contract. So this one's going to lag a little bit. People put their homes on the market yesterday, so that's what the spike was but it doesn't mean that anybody went out yesterday and wrote a contract. So I want to watch this and see if it starts following along. And it's the gap between the two that's going to give me a sense of direction on pricing. So stay tuned to that. That's what we really want to watch. Now, there are agents out there telling you right now that it's going to be busy, that rates have gone down and here they come. And if you don't buy now, um, you're going to be standing in line waiting to buy a house in spring. I'm not in that camp until I start seeing some numbers that say that that's going to happen. Because even though if you're a buyer, there was some good news on interest rates past couple of weeks, it wasn't great. I mean, it was a pretty good move, but you know, affordability really hasn't changed. So there isn't any monumental change in the market that says that buyers are going to come out in droves. Will it get a little busier? Yes, simply because it's going to be January and February. So try not to read anything into that. Don't be pushed to make a decision that you're not ready to make yet. So be careful. You know, real estate's a long-term game, so you don't really need to play it month by month anyway. But if you're looking for a trend, this is what we're going to look at. This is expired listings. They didn't go nuts. Nothing to report home there. Right here is a commentary from the Crawford Report talking about we're starting 2024 with one of the lowest counts of listings under contract we've ever recorded. We measured 54, 56 last year, this year 51, 27, and 93, 23, and 2022. We're saying we have to go all the way back to 2008 to find a lower number. Interesting. With interest rates much lower than two months ago, we may start to see more accepted contract activity in the next few weeks. We normally get a lot of new listings in January, too. Just showed you that. At this stage, it's too early to tell whether supply or demand will grow the fastest. The next three weeks will be very important in establishing which trend is dominant. So looking at lagging data, looking at November, December is not going to tell you anything about the direction of the market in 2024. The next three weeks might. If new listings start coming up and buyers are not following that, well, there you go. It's going to be a little easier for buyers out there. If new listings come up and the new buyers are right behind them and that gap's starting to close, well, maybe a little uh, more brisk than we thought. There's another optimistic thing I'm picking up here, and that is canceled listings per week, 19. It was 249 back last year. We had 19. Well, what does that tell me? That tells me that people that had their homes listed are still saying, well, let's hang in there. Let's see what happens. I think it'll sell. Don't cancel it. And only 19 people did. Normally, you get to the end of the year, people are like, I give up. Forget it. Hey, realtor, that listing we got, can you pull it off the market? I'm I'm tired of only having one showing a week. So that one, uh, it surprised me how fast it went down. Uh, 257, 170, 19. Wow. People just said, well, keep it on. I, that's an optimistic sign to me for, for them. Pending listings, they're down. This matches what I just showed you on the seven-day moving average. So this is going to have to climb. Well, guess what, folks? It will because it did and it did and it did. So it will. So you'll see people saying, okay, pending listings are up. 
here we go. It's taken off like crazy. Well, yeah, it will. January and February, there'll be more pending listings. We're digging out of a big hole here. So that number is going to climb up. So again, that number only means something if you compare it to the number of new listings. If new listings are growing at a much faster clip than pending listings, that means pricing pressure on the downside will start showing up. But as it stands right now, it looks like they're kind of following each other closely. Now, we did have a good change in interest rates the past few weeks, but I don't think it's going to create a meteor of activity of prices going up. I don't see the rush to get out there like some agents on YouTube and Facebook have been saying, you know, get out there now in January. I'll tell you what, February and March, whoo boy, you're going to wish you got in January. I, you never have to act that fast except in 2021. 2021 was crazy. That was a year of the beatdown. We've got time, folks. If you look here at the average list price, nothing's changed for a long time. List prices have just stayed there. Ticked up a little bit. I expect that to tick up in January. That's when the optimism shows up. It's a new year. Yay. Let's go. Time to list the house. Let's go ahead and see what we can get. I expect to see some of that. So that's where we're headed going into the season. What I really want to follow closely, and there's one here that that I'm curious to look at, but I can already make a prediction on it anyway. It's the uh, uh, Cromford Market Index where it changes once a month, and it's the measurement of supply and demand. It's this one here where you've heard me talk before that I'm waiting for these lines to cross, the blue line above the red line. The blue line, which is um, uh, listings, and then the red line is demand. I expect those to cross when this comes out in the next day or two. So that's finally going to happen. It did happen here, but then it turned around and came down. Went absolutely nuts back here in 2008. Listings way up here. Demand was way down there. There go your prices. So you're going to have to see something this radical in order for prices to come flying down. Do I expect to see it? Uh, not in the first quarter. There isn't any, any indication there. And quite honestly, I don't see any indication it's going to happen the rest of the year either. With all the predictions that I'm seeing out there in the data, this I don't think is going to be the year that you're going to get your crash, folks. So maybe you will. I don't know. That's not my uh, forte. I'm not good at it. I have lost a dollar before just trying to guess interest rates. So all you can do is look at the current numbers, try to decide what it's telling you and help you make a decision. So stay tuned. Do me a favor. Punch that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.